So we're back. This is Senate Government Operations. <clears throat> we're going to be looking yet again at another kind of emergency bill related to the our COVID numbers and how we're um, making accommodations for not only municipalities, but other public entities also. We passed the town meeting bill and we passed the... Um, um, yesterday passed the open meeting uh, um, eliminating the requirement that there be a physical location where people could attend. And today we've had, we had a number of um, questions about two things. One was, um, I'm sure you all got it about signatures. And in fact, we heard it on the floor this morning when Senator Perchlick asked about it. And the other one was about um, school, if they could send out their ballots together. And both of them seemed a little more complicated than putting into the original town meeting bill or the open meeting law. So Tucker has put together a draft for us. And um, I realize he had another. Oh, oh, he's back. Oh, he's back. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Tucker. So if you'd like to walk us through this. Um, is it posted? Uh, 222 seems to be up for today. I, I um, no, I also e emailed it to you. Oh, okay. Oh, you did? Okay. Yes. To switch pages then. It's um, drafting request 22-0544. Draft and, one point one. And when did you email it to us? About ten minutes, five minutes ago. I think everybody got it. Oh, yep. I got it. Did somebody right. say no? Oh, Gwen, I did not send it to you. I sent it to Karen. Let me. Karen, can, can you? I can send it to Gwen. Or Karen can. Yeah. Karen can forward it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, Tucker, do you want to tell us what's going on here? Good afternoon. Tucker Anderson, Office of Legislative Counsel. Uh, the draft committee bill that you have in front of you contains two operative provisions. Um, the first, starting in section one, subsection A, uh, would allow a person to, uh, excuse me, states that a person shall not be required to collect voter signatures in order to have the person's name placed on the ballot as a candidate for a local election that is held at a 2022 annual municipal meeting. So a person could have their name placed on the ballot for the annual meeting without having to meet the signature requirements under general law. Second provision, subsection B, uh, notwithstands specific provisions within Title 16, any other provision of law or any school district article of agreement that requires the ballots of member municipalities to be commingled by the district um, and allows the legislative body of a school district to vote that ballots for the 2022 annual district meeting shall not be commingled before counting. The ballots may be counted by each member town uh, and the results reported to the school district clerk for determination of the official district-wide results. And uh, under those general law provisions that you see that apply to uh, school districts and union school districts in 16 VSA section 706W and 711E, uh, one is a mandatory provision for the co-mingling of the ballots that districts receive from their member towns. And the other is an optional provision, but some school districts have opted into commingling their ballots and are now mandated by that section to commingle. So this lifts both of those and articles of agreement that require commingling and will allow the districts to receive reports on the counted ballots from their member municipalities. And does this, satis does this address the issue that Senator Polina and the other Washington County senators had around their career center? 
My understanding uh, was that that was the concern specific to the mailing of ballots mm -hmm. under S-172, which did pass the House today and is on the way to the governor. Oh, great. Uh, and uh, I don't know if there was a miscommunication at some point, but I did reach out to my colleagues who handle education issues and legislative counsel, and they assured me that the career technical centers uh, with a very narrow specific exclusion uh, would all be incorporated under that bill under the definition of municipalities. And because we were not withstanding both the school district requirements and the general election law requirements that the career technical centers, even those that serve multiple municipalities and perhaps bridge school districts would be included and I can send you the reference, but there's one very specific exclusion from that. And it covers maybe one or two of those CTCs. And there's, I, from what I understand, a specific reason why they don't use Australian ballot systems. Yeah, I think we ran into that last year with those two um, career centers. Senator Clarkson? So, well, there are three independent career and technical education centers that may is that what we're talking about what well, there are so does this will this cover the three independent ones manchester springfield and uh, middlebury those are the three independent they are their own independent districts and they are not i mean they are sat i mean as we found with arpa money sadly they're not included in their in all the regular stuff so we want to make sure whatever provision we're making for career and technical education centers be that all of them, including the three independents, are included. I just brought up my notes and the only CTE centers that would not be included in that definition of municipality and whose Australian balloting provisions were not, with, not, not withstood by the previous bill are CTE centers that are part of a comprehensive high school under 16 VSA section 1546. And uh, in that instance, those particular centers are embedded within another educational corporation that will be able to use the Australian ballot uh, authority under the previous bill. So they're covered. Right, thank you. Any questions for Tucker? this point. And it's very clear in here that it's just for local elections that the signature requirement is waived. Yes, and to back up Senator White, under that subsection A, it's even more specific. It is just for the annual meeting. Got, got it, okay. Right. Um, committee questions? So, okay. Will, Chris, do you want to weigh in? I'll weigh in real quick. Thank you, Senator White. And thank you all for your work on the town meeting bill. It's amazing. It got through in four days. It passed out of the House today. I think it's headed to the governor's desk. That's got to be some kind of record. <laughs> um, we needed that one right away. And, and you recognize that and got it done, which is great. And that's why we're fearful of adding any of these other provisions to that bill. Um, and we weren't sure, you know, to be honest, how much of an outcry there was going to be for the signatures or um, for the commingling piece, but that seems to have gained some, some momentum as you came into session. So we were getting more and more requests for that. So I think it makes a lot of sense to put it into a, a separate bill. And um, Senator White, thank you for being so responsive last night and Tucker for working your magic late at night last night to get us into the position where we are today. Just barely 24 hours later um, to be looking at a bill. Uh, we think this does the trick. I think um, this is language that Will has worked on and, and sent to Tucker. The commingling ballots language, I, Will can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he talked to the Agency of Education about that last year when we used it in a directive. So it's got kind of the, the thumbs up from them. They would like to, you know, there's a reason that commingling provision is in there and they'd like it to, to be there, but I think they understood under the circumstances to waive it for this year, um, to waive it once again this year. Um, so I think we're, we're good with this bill. It looks pretty straightforward and I'd leave it to Will to add any 
any more comments, any detail uh, from our perspective? <clears throat> really quickly, and hello to Senate GovOps. Nice to see all of you in the new year. Um, no, I think Chris pretty much covered it. I, I would just clar clarify or just make clear that um, the language for removing the signatures requirement is, I think, and Tucker can nod, an exact copy essentially of what was um, passed in Act 162, which was that act that you pass as the final act of the 2020 session, looking ahead to the 2021 annual meetings um, and worked very well. So I think it should be all set. And then the uh, language regarding commingling, like Chris just said, Deputy Secretary said, um, comes mostly directly from the directive that we issued pursuant to the authority you gave us to issue a directive about um, modifying election procedures last year for local meetings. Um, and that provision also was taken advantage of by at least by a number of districts, and they really appreciated um, the ability to not have to do that commingling process during the pandemic. Any Otherwise, questions? I guess just, I don't, I really don't want to, and I don't think we all should as a committee or you all should as a committee wade in too much to the career center stuff right now, because it's not particularly pertinent to this bill, but just keep in mind the distinction that, that the previous bill that just got passed through the house today just authorizes the use of Australian ballot. It, it doesn't further authorize the mailing of ballots to all voters. And in order to do the mailing, the proactive mailing of ballots to all voters under the Australian ballot system, they need to follow the provisions you all passed in Act 60 last year, which requires the assent of the member towns in a school district before you can mail ballots out to all voters. But this bill is simple, um, concise, and I think will be really effective. Um, so I appreciate you guys taking it up. And we have gotten a flood of emails and questions about both of these issues, signatures and commingling. So well, I think it is, a, it is a real need. And, and so have we. Yep, I'm sure. <laughs> so, um, Carol, do you wanna? Welcome, we haven't seen you yet this year. Of course, we've only been here for three days. And passed two bills. <laughs> and I only heard about this one a little while ago. So while, while Will was talking, I was able to read it. <laughs> So that's a good thing. <laughs> um, yes, this uh, I, I got several emails earlier today. I had a, a clerk contact me and say to apologize that she had gotten this ball rolling by uh, contacting Senator Perchlick and Senator White. And uh, I uh, I said to her, no, no, I appreciated that she came clean and, <laughs> and told me about it. But uh, but that it was something that uh, that. I had been hearing a lot of. So um, I think it's I think it's very uh, helpful to many people, myself included. Um, I currently serve as clerk of the or treasurer of the uh, Barry Unified Union School District, and those positions are elected by a, a at a floor meeting the night before town meeting, um, and uh, they're considering going to Australian ballot under the the. 172 that was passed earlier today. And if that were to happen, I would have to race around and collect 60 signatures on a petition um, in the next two weeks. So um, I'm one of those people who would benefit from, from this bill. Um, so that's just an example of, of uh, why, it's, why it's an important uh, um, bill to pass. Um, as far as commingling, the, the biggest concern of course is, is health um, and making sure that uh, people don't have to gather together. I, I heard you mention the, the career center vote, and that's something that, that we're going to have to deal with um, with regards to, to the Central Vermont Career Center, which is holding a, um, a creation vote um, at, on March 1st. Um, but it's the potential that I'm going to need to have 18 different towns all gathered together to uh, to tally the ballots, to commingle the ballots, to review each one for um, write-ins, um, and if we're able to uh, um, lobby the the, the uh, school boards um, and the the planning committee to do away with commingling, um, that will be a, a, a big advantage for us too. From a health and safety, I I don't want to gather together. Would love to spend time with 18, 17 of my fellow clerks, but 
Um, if we can, uh, if we can find a safer way to do it, then that's a good thing. Thank you. Gwen, Karen. Thank you. Um, and thank you for uh, taking up this bill. You, you have been quite busy this week. Um, we appreciate all your focus on these issues. Uh, and, and this bill um, works for us. Uh, we're, we're not commenting necessarily on the commingling piece of it, but um, it, it certainly makes a lot of sense um, with respect to the candidate signature, so sorry. Gwen, I don't know if, oh. yeah, if Gwen has anything to add. So committee, any questions? I do have to say that, you know, <clears throat> we've been getting a lot of thanks from people for acting quickly here, but the real thanks I think um, goes to Tucker for whipping these out pretty quickly. And also because we've passed these before, there wasn't a lot of controversy around them. Um, we've taken testimony in the past on each of these issues. And so I think that the thanks goes to Tucker and the Secretary of State's office and the league for, for keeping us on our toes here. We, we, just, we just take them and pass them. You do all the work. Here, here, Senator Clarkson. And I, I, I not only would like to thank them, but I'd also like to thank our constituents because uh, th they have confidence that by communicating with us, they'll get things done. And this really should be three examples of, of communication from our constituents in cooperation and coordination with the, with the League and, and the Secretary of State's office. We've gotten these three things done. And it just, as uh, Sarah Bruce, who testified the other day in our committee, she sent a lovely email to, to me just saying it was so exciting to see uh, democracy in action uh, uh, by that whole process. So I think that's also a shout out to how we work here in Vermont. So anybody have anything that, so does any, would anybody like to make a motion on this one? I know because counts the votes, but I, I move that we. I don't even. Uh, it, it. It's uh, draft we... two two dash o five four four draft one point one. As a committee bill. As a committee bill. Did I move that or did Allison? <laughs> I find you, did. you did. You did a great job. <laughs> it's a team effort. Okay, are, are we ready? Okay, okay. Senator Rom Hinsdale, do you wanna call the roll? Senator Clarkson. Yes. Senator Collimore. Yes. Senator Polina. Yes. Myself, Senator Rom Hinsdale, yes. Senator White. Yes. <laughs> Would someone like to report this? I would just suggest since Anthony was doing the other bill when the question came up, maybe it seems like there's a connection, you know, to Senator Perchlick's question and all that. that that's very good. Here, here. I would second that suggestion. <coughs> What's the suggestion? <laughs> <laughs> that you, you are the reporter. I wasn't paying here. attention. Uh, well, you're the reporter. You did oh. such a rocking job with... Two, 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 that we nominate you to do this. And <clears throat> Anthony, I hope you remember from yesterday how you get this committee bill up to the to Senator Bloom, Secretary Bloomer. Well, it actually was pretty hit or miss yesterday, to tell you the truth. I mean, I'm not sure we did it right or not. I mean, okay. we did it right eventually, but I'm well, not it, sure. I it couldn't got tell there. point A to point B. Maybe but I'll we, send a note to Secretary Bloomer right now and tell him we have a bill coming. And, oh, and tell him he to should contact you. Okay, or before I leave the building, if you want, tell him it's a committee bill. And on my way out the door, I'll tell him that we'd like to take it up on Tuesday. 
Perfect. Madam Chair? Yes. The uh, protocol is that I send the Senate Secretary's office an email as soon as we vote it. Okay. okay. Then Good. I'll step back. I'll step back. Okay. And so will I. Okay. Tucker had his hand up. <laughs> I was going to say that the Legislative Council Drafting Operations Office also needs to be included on that message because the bill won't move forward until apparently I have certified the version of the bill and Drafting Ops has approved it to go to the Senate Secretary's office. So, so who does Gail that. copy? The does LC that come Drafting from the office. reporter, Tucker, or does that come from me? It has to come from the reporter. Okay. To, and that goes to Nadine. Nadine retired. Nadine really? retired. So now it goes to Caitlin. So <clears throat> we need Caitlin. I don't. C Caitlin. Anthony, I'm going to. Um, I am going to send an email to Secretary Bloomer and tell him that it is coming, and that, um, and I'll copy you on it and Gail so that, and then <clears throat> we'll make sure that it goes to him and to whoever it is at um, Ledge Council. I'm not sure who, who it is. Madam Chair, if you yeah. would also include Helen and Vanessa in your email, that would be okay. terrific. Okay, great, we will do. And yeah, I just wanna be, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I just want to be clear, the co-mingling thing is really about safety. That's that's what it's about. Yeah. I mean, because yeah. I when I first read the draft, I was kind of like, I mean, I understood what it said, but I wasn't sure what what, what how it was different from in the past. In other words, I get my ballot for the school and I send it, I mail it back to my town. I don't mail it back to, I mail it back to the school district. I'm not sure. I'm just confused about how it and how co-mingling ends up happening. Carol, do you want to? Sure. Or, or... In, in the, uh, where, where commingling is called for, um, what happens is that ballots go back to your town, as you said, Senator Polina, and then the clerk in those towns are responsible for bringing the ballots okay. to the host community where they are all tallied together. Okay, I thought that was the case, but I was just, I wasn't sure. My wife actually used to do that, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Do we, do we yet know who is, um, this is going to in Ledge Council? Tucker did mention a name. Caitlin. Caitlin. Yeah, but who's Caitlin? I can't just write Caitlin. Uh, Tucker, do we know Caitlin's last name? I think they want it to send to drafting operations. But who is that? Who's K? Well, it, it's the whole department. I know, but it, it has to be sent to somebody. Uh, I can't. Tucker's back. Okay. I, I just sent you an email with the group tag. If you start typing in LC drafting, it will autofill with the whole team. And that's Got who it. it should be sent to so that if someone's out for any particular reason, they get the message. Thanks, Tucker. Uh, I'm writing L C D R A F T I N G, and not that it isn't telling me there is no such person. <clears throat> Maybe because I've never used that before. Is it I at L E G? I got L dash council at Montpelier dot vt org. That doesn't sound quite right either. But he just sent it to Gail, I think. Gail, do you have it? Um, yeah, I can take care of it if you, if you okay. want. Okay. That would be great for yeah. today. So I don't have to, just to be clear, then I don't have to do anything. You're going to send it to whoever it has to be sent to. I'm going to copy you, Senator Polina, and you sure. might have to confirm that it's the correct copy. Or they might get fussy about it and ask you to send it directly. Okay, well, madam. All right. Okay. All right. Do we need to do anything more? Um, I think you need to vote. <laughs> oh, Wait. I we did vote. We did vote. We did. 
Ma Ch Madam Chair, I have a question for Carol. Wait, we, 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 we voted. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear a roll, roll call. So yeah, she, she read the roll. Okay. May, uh, I, 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 may I ask you. a question, uh, Madam Chair? Yeah. Uh, Carol and Chris and Will, uh, would you be kind enough to communicate with clerks uh, that this is coming down the pike? I actually sent people are going to be wanting to. Yeah. Yep. I sent out an email out a little while ago, letting them know about one passage of 172, letting them know about the open meeting law stuff that was coming out, and also letting them know that this was in the pipeline. So, Carol, you are fabulous. Does Carol, does that resolve the career center issue as well? Uh, I. I I'm not 100% sure, but I will coordinate with Will to find out the way my interpretation of the way the language is written is that we will need to request that the school boards, the 18 school boards, um, approve not commingling. Right. But I may be misinterpreting it. I just read it 37 seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Chris. I think we're good. Yep. And thank you, Carol, for getting the word out. Carol, I will follow up with you on that specific issue. We can talk it through. <clears throat> and can you also let uh, Senator Polina know so that if the question comes up on the floor, he can respond? Because it did come from his his uh, community. Yes. It came from Marshfield. So, yeah, it was part yeah. of the group that's. Yeah. Well, and also, <clears throat> Senator Perchlick, I don't remember. Yeah, they actually, about that they actually sent it to Perchlick directly, and then Perchlick sent it to me, and then I sent it to Tucker, <clears throat> and Tucker sent it to Will or something. I don't know what happened after Tucker, tell you the truth. And but. Will sent it to me, and then I sent it to my uncle. And right. Then <laughs> right. I actually sent Senator Perchlick some uh, uh, statutory language just about half an hour ago. He was looking for where commingling was actually mentioned in statute. So I sent him some of those links. So um, okay. I don't know whether it would be helpful for me to forward that to, to you, Senator White, or at this stage of the game, the heck with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, so committee, we have done that, right? <clears throat> now, um, I just want to, Sure. let you know what so that you have a sense of I think I went over it yesterday no, about Where's next Max? week's oh I have to go get them oh, at so we late then probably 2 30 I mean at 1 30 on Wait, um, Tuesday yeah. Brian will do the GAC built and if you would check with Justin and whoever to see if we really need to do that or not I will okay and then <clears throat> two o'clock um I have that we're going to walk through the planning office bill at S96. And at three o'clock, <clears throat> the walk through S155, which is the Agency of Public Sur Safety. And, oh. <laughs> uh, there he is. Oh, what oh. a beauty. Oh. He is delicious. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He is so beautiful. He's, he's just hey, a baby. Secretary Bloomer. Well, he Look won't back. see that size for very long is the challenge. <laughs> is that Secretary <laughs> Bloomer there? Like your puppy. He's hungry. <laughs> he likes to eat. <laughs> Madam Chair, I'm going to unmute because uh, Secretary Bloomer's here and we'll I know. explain the process us in 25 words or less. Okay. Too much pressure. Uh, so generally, <laughs> Senator Polina has to let the drafter know, sign it, and then you go to drafting. We do not put the bill on the calendar. It would be introduced on Tuesday morning, just like the one this morning, the 222. So once that, once that gets into drafting, they'll print it up. You may want to tell them you want to do it for Tuesday. Otherwise, it may be in a queue that doesn't get us to Wednesday. So so if that makes sense to you, but we don't we uh, we don't need the actual bill. It, it goes to drafting because it, it's a committee bill and and not a uh, report. Was anybody counting words? It's about twenty five. It was about. 
<clears throat> so Senator Polina, you just need you need to send it to them and to you need to tell them that to we him. want it Tuesday. Senator Polina? I, yep. I, I sent it to drafting operations. And if you just want to do like a reply all saying right. that you need it by Tuesday, then everybody will get it and I think we'll be copacetic. Tuesday <laughs> at 9 30. <laughs> who's the, the draft? Okay. I'll go I'll go out to drafting right now operations and let them know. Okay, thank you. So thank do you. I have to do it? Do I have to do anything? I'm confused. <laughs> I thought I had stuff to do. Now I'm not sure I need to do anything. We we, yes. we need you we need you to make sure that you approve the bill. You have to tell Tucker and or drafting. And I'm gonna go out and push them to make sure it's done by Tuesday. Okay. So you're going to send an email to whoever Gail sent it to and re do reply all and say, yes, we approve this and we want it by Tuesday. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank so you, <clears throat> next okay. Wednesday, we are going to do the uh, State House Oversight Committee. And who, and we've got um, David we've got and Steve, whatever Steve, his Steve, name is. Steve Perkins. Yeah. Who, chair of the committee yep. and David and, and Ruth and I, Ruth might float in to join me because we are very engaged with this work, but we'll see. <laughs> yes, we, yes. Okay. But we will hear from the chair and okay. And yep. then we are also going to look, do um, start taking testimony on the ethics bill 171 on Tuesday. So if there's anybody um, that should be invited, um, we've invited, I don't even remember who at this point, but if Tom there's somebody Zone. that you, huh? You invited Tom Zone, right? From judiciary. Um, I think we did. I have to check and see. Yes, we did. Okay. Um, but if, they, if you can think of anybody that we that needs to be there to to wait in on this, um, just send me a note or send Gail a note. Okay. And Friday, remember, then we will take up pensions again. Um, okay. No. Oh, and Thursday we'll go through the municipal bill that they have one eighty one. And um, 175, which is a repeat of 107, which was vetoed by the governor last year, but it wasn't vetoed because of the bill. It was vetoed because he had issues with the underlying um, bill, the underlying thing, which was raise the age. And judiciary has just passed out <clears throat> an amended version of raise the age. So um, this bill will be tracking that one. So we'll have, um, I don't remember who drafted it. <clears throat> and now I will go to my three o'clock meeting. What? It's 4.15. I know. <laughs> So are, are we saying adieu? I am. <clears throat> if you want to keep on, you can. Oh, thank you. Have a great weekend, everybody.